Unger the Radar, bringing movies and people together, one frame at a time. Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is a very special edition of Unger the Radar, where we talk all things film and sometimes TV. Um, I have with me uh, a legend in the entertainment business, Mr. Maurice Lamarche. Uh, he is a renowned voice actor, not just animation, but also uh, live action as well. Um, he has a new film out called Murder Anyone, and it is a very quirky little film, a lovely uh, mystery comedy. But before we get into that, Maurice, uh, I just want to say that I am a member, a card carrying member of the New York City Ghostbusters charity group here. Wonderful. In the city. And I just want to say that it is an absolute honor to be in your presence tonight. Well, I, I'm honored to be in yours, Randy, because <laughs> oh. <laughs> I believe the, the, the work that the, that the Ghostbusters chapters all across the country do is so valuable. You do so much for children and charities and, and um, it's, it's, it honors the spirit of Ghostbusters and Harold's spirit um who's you know i was just lucky enough to stand on his shoulders for those 140 episodes of real ghostbusters and extreme ghostbusters and slimer and the real ghostbusters mm -hmm. and um but you know um you know his 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 keyboard and along with dan Aykroyd was really where the spirit of ghostbusters emanated from and he i know that he was thrilled that so much good is being done in the world in the name of ghostbusters and karen continues to be to this day and i'm honored whenever i get to meet any of the ghostbusters chapters so thank you for your hard work of course of the kids randy yeah and i just want to also thank you for providing not just myself but uh all of my other ghostbuster brethren for a, a very uh a, a, a very special childhood uh throughout all your voice work uh, in the late 80s and 90s so again i want to thank you uh for that I'm very, very glad to mm -hmm. be able to do anything, but you guys are really doing the, the grunt work, the hard work. You're the ones out there showing up mm -hmm. and cheering the kids up. So bless you. Thank you. We do what we can and we love the kids. We love the fans. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great. Um, all right. So murder anyone. Uh, this is a very interesting little film. Mm -hmm. uh, tell everybody about it. Well, what's the premise and uh, how did you get involved? Well, uh, and, and I like the way you did it at the beginning. And I know it's easy to just say murder anyone, but, but that sounds like really, a, a really indiscriminate serial killer. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, right. even, even, even Lecter had his standards, you know, <laughs> eat the rude Clary, no. so, you know, but, uh, you know, just you, you, mur murder anyone is, right. is based on a play written by my friend Gordon Bressack. Yeah. who is the director of this film, James Cullen's Bressack's father. Yeah. Um, and um, it is a play about, it started as a play about two writers having an argument about how to write their latest play, yeah. uh, which is a, 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 a neo-noir thriller. Mm. Oh, yeah. One of the writers has a secret, and that's that he's trying to steer this thing in the direction of a screenplay because mm -hmm. he believes that they can make more money right. writing a, a far out comedy or thriller, rather, with uh, zombies and and vampires and all that sort of thing. And that's my character, George, right. who is based on Gordon. Gordon wrote the character with himself in mind, and he wrote Charlie, the other writer, with his real life writing partner Charlie Howell in mind who plays Charlie in the movie mm -hmm. so uh Charlie was uh, Charlie was he actually I remember when picking the brain uh, came to an end a friend of mine started taking uh, Meisner and he called me and said there's a good you know I got a guy in my Meisner class who says he worked with you Charlie Howell and I said I called Charlie I said taking Meisner hmm. and he goes yeah I want to expand my horizons I want to still want to write but I want to a couple of good actors. He's an excellent actor and he's mm -hmm. wonderful in the film. So we have the, the kind of fights that he and uh, Gordon might have had, you know, char character fights, you know, right. that's what to do with the characters. Uh, and and uh, and then those are taken to the extreme for the sake of comedy and drama. Um, so it's about the creative struggle. Mm -hmm. And it's also about all the, all the genres 
uh, kind of mixing it up in the uh, on film. We we write the thing, and then what we're writing suddenly pops up on the screen, mm-hmm. and you're taken to that world. And it's so funny. I, I I don't know if you've seen the screener of it yet or not, but I did. Yeah, very funny film. The yeah, is terrific. And mm-hmm. uh, the other actors, uh, Carla Collins, this plays a a blind psychic. Mm-hmm. Galileo Steinman plays a femme fatale. Uh, Christos Andros uh, and uh, plays the uh, plays the uh, probably serial killer. Mm-hmm. Spencer Breslin is hilarious, right. uh, and I won't tell you quite where he comes in, but uh, you know <laughs> uh, we even have uh, this Oscar nominee Sally Kirkland right. uh, in the in the film, and so it's a it's a real ride. Yeah, and as you say, it's quirky, very. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's that's half the fun now how did you how did you get uh, on board with it well i mean gordon bressack uh, james's father had been a friend since the pinky and the brain days and i was also yeah. in his in his uh, uh in my opinion uh, uh highly underrated um animated series uh, captain Simeon and the space monkeys mm. which was uh just just a just a, a true uh uh, I mean, it, 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 it was, how can I put it? I mean, it had people from Star Trek, people from, from Babylon 5. It had, uh, you know, Malcolm McDowell. It was, it was James, uh, you know, uh, Michael Dorn, James Avery from, from, uh, from, you know, Fresh Prince, Uncle Phil. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just had so many great people. Um, and we, um, this, 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 uh, this show, and oh, DC Fontana wrote a script. We had, uh, I think Harlan Ellison was was talking about submitting a script that went to a season three. I mean, we had some great people from the from the genre writing and working on this on this show. And Gordon and I became fast friends. We had a kind of similar level of cynicism. Yet we were both kind of you know cheerful men, but uh, you know we had that kind of looking askance at the world kind of thing. So we we gravitated to one another. And we became friends all through Pinky and the Brain hmm. and, and beyond. And um, and I attended the opening night of not only the play version of Murder Anyone, but Murder Anyone, yeah. but also those <laughs> two other plays. And, um, and I know James wants to adapt all of Gordon's plays for the screen. Hmm. But this was the first one. And I've known James since he was four. I'm one of seven people on the planet allowed to call him Jimmy. Uh, but, uh, you know, on set, I made sure to call him James. Uh, and he runs the f- most fun set I've ever been on, okay. which is, which is a testament to him because we were, you know, he financed this film himself. So mm. I'm not, I'm not wasting the studio's money if I don't know my lines or if I'm goofing off too much, I'm wasting James's money. Right. And so, you know, we were deadly earnest in making this picture and yet had incredible fun. And we had a lot of you know, set inside jokes and things like that. Hmm. But uh, so he just handed the part to me, you know, and his faith in me is means so much to me because I'm primarily a voice actor. I mean, I've done some on camera, yeah. but I'm primarily a voice actor. And uh, that skill set is one that I don't, I don't know if it was rusty or not. I don't think it was, but, um, but certainly it's not one I keep as alive as possible. Hmm. And yet, when we did this film, I said, I owe James a lot because I've, I've managed to pick up three individual and one uh, cast award for best actor okay. So uh, on the festival circuit. So this mm. has been a, a very nice little ride for me. We, we shot it about a year ago mm. um, and uh, I've lost 40 pounds <laughs> since we shot it. So the opening act and the, the opening scene of the trailer is just focusing on my stomach and a paddle ball and I'm and, 40 uh, pounds is that a good thing or a bad thing no it's a good thing totally okay. <laughs> diet and exercise okay good totally All right. eating right and getting to the gym okay uh, a little so concerned yes. for a second there <laughs> no 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 it's been a concerted effort okay um, <laughs> and uh and i've got more to go by the way I mean, I'm right okay. <laughs> um, um do, you, so, do you approach i'm sorry go um, ahead no uh do you approach live action roles the same way you do uh voice roles do you like look at it in the same lens. Well, uh, you know, you're you're always creating a character and and going into the moment of whatever the scene is and making it as real for yourself as possible. Um, obviously, with with film, 
uh, and theater, you've got other actors to act, truly relate to and make eye contact with and, and work with. In animation, it's all, you know, you know, you gotta make it just come from here, just from the, the voice and, you know, and work that mic. So uh, I, you know, I literally, I never look at my other actors because then my, my voice would go up right like that. You know? <laughs> so I, I sort of paint the cartoon on the white part of the script and then read the black part, you know, but I'm seeing the cartoon as I'm, I'm projecting it onto the, the hmm. pages. And, um, you know, that's that's sort of my little technique. Obviously, memorization is the biggest part mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, uh, I love your Ghostbusters mug. Oh, of course. In honor of you. Sir. John Spengler loves your, loves your mug. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, obviously, memorization is a huge part of it. Of course, knowing, knowing you know, your mark and where the key line is and all that sort of thing. Um, hmm. but you know, I, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I, I, I need to study Michael Caine more, you know, because if you look at the outside art, <laughs> you to look at. don't look at the inside art because then the audience doesn't know who you're relating to. So anyway, uh, all that kind of stuff. We have a lot of onset jokes about my inexperience. Am I doing too much with my hands? <laughs> Am I hand acting? Hi there, you know. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> um, so you know, it's important to stay relaxed. And really, relaxation uh, is is key in any form of acting. You know, the less self conscious you are, the better you're going to be. Just being, you know, because acting is listening and relating to your fellow actor, and you'll do the right thing. You'll do the natural thing. You'll be you'll be a version of you. So um, those are the, that's really the only differences. And and what is it about animation specifically that has attracted you? Uh, I mean, you've been doing this for so long, um, and you've done so many different shows. What is it about the medium of animation that fascinates you so? The idea that I can become, you know, any character. That there are so many ways and places to take my voice and my even my my body language. You know, the physicalization that you do in a, in a an animated cartoon, as long as you don't make noise that will, you know, uh, you know, disrupt the take by, you know, too much uh, clothing noise, or you bump a stand, or you know, technical things like that. You know, you can you can play so many characters in voiceover. It's like belonging to the world's largest rep company. You know, <laughs> uh, a show like Futurama, where I play at least a dozen recurring or central characters, and probably another sixty one-offs and and and, and two-offs. You know, it, it becomes just tremendous fun. Yeah. Uh, and over the years, do you, I mean, you've done so many roles, so many characters. Is there one that you just look back fondly? That's like, would you say is your favorite? Like, is there a favorite character you've done? Well, my friend, <laughs> as much as I'd like to say that they're all my children, my brain is definitely <laughs> one that resonates with me because in his quest to take over the world the actor in me relates to the thwartedness of of uh, all the missed auditions and the chances to be in the hit sitcom <laughs> maurice feld or everybody loves mo or you know, <laughs> mo improvement you know, <laughs> so you know brains taking over the world is like me wanting to take over show business and uh, <laughs> you know so you know we all feel thwarted in us in in our lives so that and plus his, his, uh, his, you know, he's got this deep abiding affection for Pinky that he mm -hmm. cannot show. Right. If he shows it, it's a sign of weakness. But uh, we all, everybody knows Pinky loves the brain, but, you know, you have to really watch the show to catch how much brain loves Pinky. Sort of like a, a mice and men relationship. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> or or Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton. If, uh, right, right. That's good. You know, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Ed Norton, had, you know, was a cockney. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's really a show about a relationship and it's the most fun relationship, mainly in, in, in large part because of the great writing from mm -hmm. writers like Gordon and Charlie and also Peter Hastings and, and Tom Ruger and Sherry Stoner, um, Deanna Oliver. Uh, but also, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a show about a friendship. It's a show about love. It's mm, great. And yeah, it's definitely resonated and it was a spinoff of Animaniacs. So obviously a testament to the characters and how memorable and lasting they were from that original show. Yeah. And we got to come back in the reboot. Yeah. Yeah. In the 
we're in the Hulu reboot, which our, th- our third and final season comes up later in the month on, on Hulu. Nice. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're picky in the brain. So it's Yakko Wacko about picky in the brain and then new things. Now, when is the when is the film coming out? The animated Pinky in the Brain film. You know, there's you, you, there's been a, a, a bit of call for that today <laughs> of uh, doing press, and uh, not, I'm not unbidden by me. It may be time for a Pinky in the Brain film. I just, I, I, I hope it is. I just don't want them to cast. You know, my running gag is they're, they're going to you know celebrity cast and dump us, and Peter Dinklage will play the brain and Russell <laughs> Brand Pinky. And uh, oh, that would know, just that would be a slap in the face. That uh, would break my heart. Yeah, because yeah. I really take I really feel a sense of ownership over the character. You know, I've played right. for, uh, you know 20, 20, 21 years, hmm. and uh, you know, I want I wanted to I wanted to always be me. And you even brought him back in in some respect uh, to Orson Welles in an episode of The Critic or a few episodes of The Critic. Yes, well, it started, I mean, I did Orson Welles before, I, I brought Orson Welles to the brain when I saw, mm-hmm. you know, when I saw his, that character's face, I thought they'd drawn an Orson Welles lab mouse for me to, <laughs> for me to play. And it huh. turned out that, you know, it was really that uh, the, he was based on a writer named Tom Minton. Mm-hmm. And Tom is brilliant. And he's one of those, you know, kind of, you know, geniuses. But you know he 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 talks the monotone like this. He speaks very very quickly and he knows a lot about a lot of things. But that would but that would nobody that would not sustain a cartoon. So uh, so when I saw him, I didn't know Tom yet, and so I just saw the brain. And I saw I saw Orson Welles, and I just infused him with that character. And I was the first and last actor to read for the part. Oh wow! And Andre Romano told me you know shortly afterwards. It's like as soon as you read, we knew we found the brain. It took him another day to find Rob Paulson. Nice. Yeah. Do you see Rob a, a lot now, or do you? Do yes, you... mostly on the con circuit. But um, okay. you know, when, when we're in town, we're both working and not always on the same projects. Hmm. So you know, we 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 have a running text chain. We probably text with each other three, four times a week, just funny little moments and things, uh, you know, observations. But uh, but awesome. when we're on the road, we we hang. We go for we go for meals, uh, and uh, you know, we, we we're we're starting to tour. A show called Animaniacs in Concert. Oh, so okay. Where, where Randy Rogel, who wrote most of the specialty songs for Animaniacs, and and Rob perform a, a large portion of the songs. But I come out and have a, a number as the brain, and then we have a wonderful closing sketch for Pinky and the Brain. Nice. So uh, okay. that's a lot of fun. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, really cool. So you you just mentioned uh, the con circuit. Uh, what is it like when you when you see your fans? Like, is it humbling? Uh, what are those interactions like? Maybe very much so, you know. As as Rob has a Rob has a line that he that he speaks, um, and but it's it's uh, it's so true. We we are exhausted from saying thank you, mm-hmm. exhausted from saying, you know, from from people letting us know what the show has meant to them and how it's helped them through hard times. Mm-hmm. And you know, I know every performer who does a con gets gets to have this, you know. And people people who come to the cons want us to know that you know if, if it's uh, whether it's an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer for James Marsters or you know uh, our, our little show we we get to hear that you know dad dad had cancer and you know we we got through his chemo treatments watching your show and mm-hmm. and uh, you know I was bullied I hear that I was bullied in high school and I actually thought about ending it and Mm-hmm. And I came home, watched an episode of Animaniacs, and your burp song made me laugh, and the laughing made me, you know, rethink my plan. And thank God, right. you know, because you know, it's really, you know, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Right. You know, I know people who, you know, when 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 they can contemplate suicide, they just want the pain to stop. Nobody really wants to die, but they want the pain to stop. And you know, we're in the pain relief business. And part of it is generating the endorphins that come from laughter. So this is why I love to do comedy cartoons so much. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so Animaniacs, obviously uh, a product of Steven Spielberg. And as you can tell, I am a fan of of Steven. Uh, what has your relationship, relationship been like with Steven over the years? Well, he won't stop pestering me. It's really, you know. Okay. Like, Wish I had that problem. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I, I've had it, you know, I've had it. Well, Stephen is amazing because uh, he's one of those people that, and even in the few interactions that I've had, he makes you feel like an old friend immediately. Hmm. Uh, he's got that quality of meeting you, looking you in the eye, not in a spooky way or a scary way, just 
looking you in the eye and you feel like you've known him all your life mm-hmm. and that there's nobody else around. He's not one of these people that's always checking out who's coming at me next, who's in the room. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's more important. Well, first of all, Stephen is the most important man in the room always. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's just he has that way of making you feel very special for the moments he's talking to you. And, you know, you almost feel like, God, I wish I had his home number. I'd love to go get coffee with him. But he's really a, a tremendously focused. And I've just enjoyed all my interactions with him. And I know he's been very pleased with... Uh, the see the, the the all the seasons of the new animaniacs mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a shame uh you know we're do, we're dropping our final season in the beginning of, you know in the middle of february mm-hmm. and it's 10 episodes and then and then it's it's goodbye maybe for a little while maybe forever we don't know mm-hmm. uh, you know things are always being you know, always in motion is the future oh. <laughs> so you know who knows with the changes that are going on warner brothers uh Maybe they, they'll find a new home for the show. Or maybe there will be that movie someday. Yes, please, I hope. <laughs> uh, is there a character that you have not done yet that you'd want to? You know, I took a run at Joker for a, mm. a series, The Batman, mm-hmm. in, um, in 2003, the one that uh, starred uh, Reno Romano as young Bruce Wayne. Mm. And um, they the, the casting note that came down was, don't do Mark Hamill. This is a different Joker. And they they drawn him almost with like Hulk-like proportions. He was built up, you know, uh, you know, he had barrel chest and big arms and and uh you know he he ran around barefoot and you know this was a different joker and they wanted something different. And so I I really went in and found like, well, what if Hannibal Lecter had a bigger sense of humor, you know, and and you know, I just but but soulless and yet. So I did something I thought was very interesting for it, uh, but I didn't. I didn't make the cut. But that was that was probably the, if if there was a character I really had wanted to play, it would have been Joker. Can you give a little snippet now? Oh, it was it was. I mean, it was twenty years ago. Uh, okay. I think it. I think it actually came out sounding a little bit like what would pe- what Heath Ledger would huh. end up doing for the character. I remember that. I remember it being very uh, like this. You know, sort of ever. Ever wonder what would happen if it was, you know, just if you were just on the other side of a really bad day, Batman, which is kind of close to, uh, yeah, oh, I got these scars. <laughs> Let's put a smile. My father. <laughs> well, like 3D right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> That's great. So if I, if, if Heath heard any of those recording sessions, he probably lifted that, uh, that accent. Oh, no, no. He was, <laughs> he, he, he was absolutely doing, um, you know, there was a, t- there's a Tom Waits interview you can see I think okay. he's Dick Cavett and you just watch that and go, oh, this is what Heath Ledger was doing. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, Tom Waits is his inspiration for the voice of the Joker. No question. Nice. So would you consider uh, revisiting Egon Spengler? You know, New York second. <laughs> yeah, I would love to to be to play Egon again. I don't know. I don't know that I'll get the chance, but uh, yeah, I would absolutely love that. Ivan. Yeah. Hey. I was in heaven. Maybe he's working. His, you know, he's working the, uh, the puppet strings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would love. I would love to play Egon again. He was great. We would love to have you back. That'd be amazing. Um. So back to murder anyone. Uh. What do you hope audiences take away from the film? Well, first of all, I hope they have a lot of laughs mm. because it is, it is very funny. I hope they get an appreciation for the writer's struggle because that's really the central theme of it. Um, and, uh, you know, just, and, and don't murder anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's, lesson. That's, that's <laughs> good the lesson at the end of it. <laughs> All right, um, uh, and I hope they come away with an admiration for Christos Andrews and Galadriel Steinman mm-hmm. and Carla Collins and Spencer Breslin, yeah. and you know our, our entire cast. You know, we just Charlie Howell, uh, and uh, there's a really lovely moment because it's also a love letter from a, a son to a dearly departed father who, you know, and that's a love letter. You know, in, in, in my own way, in my performance to my long, my my long longtime friend Gordon. Mm-hmm. Stick with the film until the credits because there's a beautiful mid-credit sequence, and uh, I hope you'll I hope you'll enjoy that. 
yeah it's <laughs> it's it's really a, a, a a tribute to the writer and his craft. Well said, sir. Uh, are there any other projects you're working on now that you can talk about? Well, we just finished um, uh, the last season of Disenchantment, which mm -hmm. is looking to drop sometime soon on Netflix. We don't have an actual date yet, but we're we're in post-production on that. That's our fifth season, and we bring everything to a very satisfying conclusion. Uh, working on the new uh, Futurama. Mm -hmm. We just recorded episode 20. Uh, two weeks ago and now we go into post and do little fixes on the show uh, and that that will be uh, first 10 episodes will drop this summer on Hulu mm -hmm. and um, and and as I said before Animaniacs coming at you on, on Hulu so yeah I'm I'm very busy so that I'm very yeah. happy about that. but I'm very excited about Murder Anyone because this is new ground for me and not only is it a chance to pay tribute to my my friend Gordon Bressack but to work with a wonderful director like James Cullen Bressack, or Jimmy, as I get to call him. Uh, I've known him since he was four. So I'm one of seven people who gets to call him Jimmy on the planet. And um, you know, I'm just really excited for people to see this film. It's great. And and how can people see it? Is it going to be on digital? It'll be, it'll be digital. Uh, it'll be on uh, many of the streamers. I'm pretty sure, and I don't, don't hold you this, but I'm at least certain it's going to be available on Prime Video. Okay. okay. And I think to be for sure, but I don't know what other what other platforms. So I just know it's hitting streaming soon. So nice. on February seventh, that's really soon. That's in six days. Yes, yes. On the date of this recording, indeed. <laughs> we don't know when it'll drop, but uh, now the secret's out. <laughs> we do record it sometime in the past. Yes, yeah, sometime in the past. Yeah. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention some other uh, shows that were very impactful for me for my childhood. Uh, Tiny Toon Adventures, The Tick, and Freakazoid. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, those are some of the more obs obscure ones. You don't really hear about Freakazoid a lot, but it was so brilliant. No, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I, and I'm hoping that it'll get a reboot, too. That'd be and, amazing. Uh, that, they call, that they get Paul Rugg. Not Paul Rudd. He's already <laughs> got a superhero. Yes, yes. Paul Rugg. <laughs> to play him. But yeah, I would, I would love to come back as Longhorn. <laughs> no. Um, I could see maybe Ryan Reynolds. At, he might be a little old, but um, as Freakazoid, I don't know. Well, if they're going to do a live action version, I guess they'd have to. But I mean, mm -hmm. they've already got, you know, kind of a wacky superhero with him with uh, Deadpool. So that's true. So you know, uh, we'll see. But I would love to see a reboot of that. Um, yeah. This is not a new reboot of Tiny Toons. No pizza rolls for me. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, and also, Maurice, um, just one more thing I wanted to mention to you. Um, the week of June 8th, uh, that's that will be Ghostbusters Day. And there is usually a, a big celebration in front of the firehouse in New York City. Um, so if, I, if you're ever if you're around, if you're in New York during that time of early June, uh, maybe uh, you'd like to stop by. Well, I, I'll, I'll check my my <laughs> schedule. I'm, I think I'm doing a con that weekend. I don't know if I'm lucky enough to have it be in the in the New York area. I know I am going to do New York Comic Con later in the year. Right. But if I'm clear that particular day, I'd yeah. be there in front of the original firehouse. It'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, we'd love to see you All and right. hear you. <laughs> yes. More importantly, to hear you. <laughs> well, thank you. And please give my best to all your fellow Ghostbusters in your chapter. Maurice, I want to thank you so much for your time tonight. This was amazing. Thank from, you. From one ghost head, this was just a, a quite an experience. So thank you so much. Very kind. Thank you. As I'm Randy Younger, this has been Unger the Radar. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Unger the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call 718-268-6634.
Under the Radar, bringing movies and people together, one frame at a time. Hey guys, I'm Randy Younger, and this is a very special edition of Under the Radar, where we bring movies and people together, one frame at a time. And I have a very special guest with me tonight, and a friend uh, to the show, as well a personal friend to me, Mr. Jason Simba. He is the executive director of the Festival of Cinema NYC, going into its seventh year. Uh, Jason, welcome back to the show. It's been a while. Good to see you. Yes, uh, good to see you. Thank you, and uh, thanks for having me back. Anytime, anytime. You know that. You're always welcome <laughs> to Unger the Radar. You are a guest. All right. Of- <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> so, seven years, man. This is insane. Yeah, last year was my first time uh at this festival it was literally in my backyard i live in forest hills queens this is the ultimate queens film festival Uh, i just want to congratulate you on all your years of service in regards to bringing uh great art to queens um tell me what was it like uh the seventh year here well it was insanely challenging uh you know the crazy thing was so so last year after the festival, uh, our whole our whole board, our whole team, everyone went their separate ways. Mm. I was pretty much the last man standing. Mm. So uh, this year, one one of the things that makes this ex- this year so exciting for me mm. is that I am working with a entirely new team, a whole new uh, board of directors, a whole new staff, all new everything. Right. So it was. It was like start like resetting. It was a reset, and we're starting from the ground up again. Only I had six years of experience this time, as opposed to you know seven years ago when I had nothing, right. uh, when I had no idea what I was doing, and you know I I had never even put a birthday party together, much <laughs> much less a right, uh, a right. film festival. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so so you know it was very challenging. Hmm. Uh, I uh, I was you know it, it's. It's difficult because I was looking forward to our seventh year because seventh year for a film festival is a milestone festival because it opens doors in terms of like you now are eligible to apply to be Academy accredited. So Mm. that's a big thing for us. Uh, Of course, they have very strict rules. And now with the whole SAG strike and and, uh, you know SAG after and and Mm. WGA strike, I'm actually almost glad that we are not uh, Mm. Academy accredited. But um, it's a whole other conversation. But um, yeah, so so the seventh year is a milestone for film festivals, right. and um and so at the end of last year we were very excited, like wow, I can't wait for year seven, what that's gonna bring, mm. and then literally within the month of the film and uh, the festival ending, so it ended last year, I believe it was August thirteenth was yeah. uh was the last day last year, uh, no no that's this year uh, August fourteenth August fourteenth okay. was the last day, um. Literally by like August 20th, mm-hmm. everyone was like, well, it's been fun, but, you know, I'm going to go and, and pursue other ventures, which okay. is fine. And, you know, they, they most of the team had been with us since the beginning. Mm-hmm. So six years of doing this, I, I was fortunate enough to have a team like them for six years with me to, to help me build a festival into what it was. So yeah. I'm absolutely grateful for all the contributions and their hard work and everything that they that they did for me, everything that we that they helped me yeah. discover and the challenges they helped me overcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, together I, I couldn't have built this festival without them. So uh, so it was great and, and it was it was bittersweet because it's like I hated to see them go, but at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, they they have other things they want to do with their life and and right right for that. Now, so um, um yeah. so so no so 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 that so that's what you know coming into this year that that was the biggest challenge. Was, okay. Oh my goodness, I have to find myself a whole new crew, a whole <laughs> new board, and I've never uh, people that I've never worked with before. Am I going to get along with these people? Are we going to clash? Is the festival going to fall apart? Uh, and and you know all those worries start you know start 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 playing with your head. I'll I'll be honest with you, uh, Jason. There nothing is more important than trusting the people you work with. If if you don't have yeah. a good relationship, you know, a, a synergy with those working with you, then the whole thing is going to fall apart. So again, kudos to you on picking such a, a great team. Yeah, you know it's it's funny. So you know the the first thing I started doing was 
reaching out to people that I had worked from that I had worked with in the past and right. people that were familiar with the film festival. So yeah. funny enough, the board members, all the board members now uh, had are, are either yeah. alumni, uh, have won festivals at the award, uh, had had won award. I can't even speak because my head has been spinning. Had won awards in previous editions of the festival, okay. uh, or some of them have even done presentations at the festival. The ones that aren't filmmakers. Mm. So uh, you know, yeah. So so I reached to the ones who I felt uh, would be able to contribute, would be interested, and who brought something new to the table. Uh, okay. One thing you know in particular about our old board <laughs> was that none of us came from a film other than myself. Uh, none of us came from a film background. They were all uh, community people or or just came from from different uh, uh, backgrounds altogether. All you know, they were just uh, in finance or whatever it was, but they were not in the film business. Uh, right. I was the only one. So this time around, our entire board is in the film business, uh, whether they're, they're filmmakers, producers, writers. I think most of them are with SAG. I think one of them is with the WGA. Uh, so, so in that sense, I built a much stronger board because right. I wanted to kind of, uh, to, to, like I said, bring get people that bring something new to the table. You know, okay. we, we already built off of everything that the old board brought, and we weren't going to lose that. Right. And you know, it's so, so, but we wanted to expand upon what we already had, and that was the only way we were going to do it. So, so you know. I had to seek these people out. I had to convince right. them to come on board. And my goodness, incredible job. What the contributions that they made this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, half the jury is because of them. Uh, a lot of the programming is where there was their ideas. Mm -hmm. So uh so so it's just been really, really great. And and a lot of resources, you know, when we needed right. A, a film or to get in contact with somebody or a director or, or or someone to do some kind of moderation or a presentation or something. I could always rely on them. I could always reach out to them and, mm. and they would always come through for me. Nice. And that's something, you know, that, that again, my old board, not to shoot them down, they, the old board helped turn the festival to what it is today, but mm. in, in moving forward and expanding and making this festival bigger, right. um, you know, this new board has really in, in the short year, it's not even a year that they've been with us. You know, they, they all came on ja as of January. Okay. So in the last eight months, I mean, they have really, gone above and beyond and and really have helped help expand and, and and grow our network and you know just just bring more to the festival make it bigger and that's why i'm really excited about this year because there's a lot of new things that we're doing that we've never done before okay uh, it, it's we're, we're we're pushing the envelope in terms of we're going a little bit beyond film this year we're, doing, we're okay. adding other elements to the film festival right um, right right you know, we're doing a, an improv class with Fo High Improv, uh, Forest Hills Improv. Uh, we're doing a, a reading, um, staged readings. So we had a new category this year, and that's uh, unproduced scripts. Okay. And, uh, you know, they had the option, those, the the 13, the top 13 of all the uh, entries that we got. We got uh, somewhere about 50, 55 entries. Uh, the, th the top 13 scripts that mm -hmm. we chose are up for a top prize. But on top of that, mm -hmm. uh, they had the option of, do, of doing a stage reading that will be presented oh. at the festival. Not That's all 13 opted to do it, but I believe we're having like five or six that will. Um, okay. You know, and then and then for the first time ever, we're doing a couple of interactive shows at the okay. festival, which kind of scares me, but I think it's going to be really exciting. Uh, it's something we've never done before. It's something that the audience has probably not experienced before. So we're crossing my fingers that that, that does not fall apart and, and blow up in our faces. Right. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I really don't think a lot of fun stuff going on, Jason. That's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and plus it. we have our first celebrity ever. We right. have, you know, Dino Montiel, the writer director of mm -hmm. A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints, who is actually uh, a Queens native. He's from mm -hmm. a story, grew up, born yep. and raised in Astoria, A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints is about his childhood in Astoria. Yeah. It was shot here in Queens in New York. Great movie, by the way. I love it. Yeah, that. absolutely. And uh, and so he'll be here in attendance. We're doing a retrospective screening of his work, uh, yeah. of that film in particular. And then we're going to do a 60-minute a moderated conversation with him following the screening. So a lot of big things. Oh, and then on top of that, we are honoring him. He's, he's our guest of honor this year. We're awesome. giving him our first ever indie 
Indie Film Vanguardian Award. Okay. We made up that name. We just thought it sounded cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice, but nice. it is an amazing award. I mean, it's different than the awards that we normally give our filmmakers, which I'm not sure if you're aware of. The ones we give our filmmakers, like a big camera statuette. It's absolutely right. amazing. Um, well, this time, what the uh, what he's getting is not a camera. It's actually something better. Uh, right. And I won't mention what it is now because he doesn't even know what it is. So uh-huh. I don't want nice. the word to get out. But they, but it will eventually come out, and they'll and people will see it, and they're going to be. So, but, Jason, uh, but yeah, you, you are you are doing so much. I I don't know how you maintain your sanity, sir. How I do I, do I don't know. Either. How do you how do you run? <laughs> what goes on in your head? Uh, your 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 executive director. You 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 have a hand in every aspect of this festival. How do you do it? I, you know, I look forward to sleeping at night. So I try to get everything done so I can get a good night's rest. <laughs> That's good what answer. motivates me. Oh God, I, I got to finish good before answer. 11 o'clock so I can go to bed and get eight hours. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, I, sometimes I don't know how I do it. It's, it's absolutely insane. Uh, you know, th- there's so much that we got to be on, that I personally have to be on top of to wow. make sure that everything run smoothly you know i gotta tie all the ends up gotta make sure all our equipment everything is counted for i gotta oversee the stab this year we have uh almost 40 volunteers which is nice Nice. in the past i think as as compared to last year i think last year we only had 15 so uh so yeah this year we have about 40 volunteers which uh that's that's a whole other new thing i'm Not experienced. So I don't know how that's going to be dealing with with forty people, staff mm-hmm. running around, and and who knows if everyone's knows what they'll be doing. Um, now, now, Jason, the, the festivals it's it's solely taking place at the Midway Theater in, in Forest Hills, correct? So, so, so the Regal UA, the Regal UA Midway, uh, is in Forest Hills, mm-hmm. is the main venue, but we have yeah. other programming going on across the street at the Queens Library at Forest Hills. Okay. So the festival is split between those two. At the library, we have a bunch of free programming. So we have a bunch of seminars, workshops, uh, and we have a couple of screenings that we're doing there. We have another interactive pre- a presentation going on there by uh, by an organization called Detroit Street Films. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're doing, let me see, I, I believe it's a seminar on crowdfunding, a workshop okay. on cinematography, another workshop on writing, the staged readings, uh, a couple of short film screenings that we're putting up. I think it's just one short, uh, like an hour block of short films. Uh, mm-hmm. But for the most part, yeah, it's all, oh, uh, a story of filmmakers club is going to be doing a presentation talking about their organization. Um, uh, Theaters on Silence Initiative is supposed mm-hmm. to be uh, doing a presentation about what they do, which they're an organization that advocates for subtitling and closed captions in uh, on movies in theaters. So to include, you know, the deaf and hard of hearing community uh, at movie theaters. So, which is something that we also, you know, uh, in partnering with that organization, we we gave that option to our filmmakers that right. they could opt to put uh, subtitles or captioning on their films. And then we will label it on our, in our program guide as a uh, part of the theaters and uh, theaters and silence initiative. And those films that that's to, I, I guess uh, to notify, I guess or signify that mm-hmm. um, that that people who are are hard of hearing or deaf can come and enjoy the film because they'll be able to to read instead of just having to listen. So I know it may be new to some people. They're going to come there and they're going to see a a film that's in English that has subtitling and has captions, and it's going to be a little uncomfortable at first. But you know, we're in 2023. It's time you know, we start expanding yeah. again and, and being wow. more inclusive and uh respectful. Jason, of- I love it. I I love that that aspect of the festival. So again, kudos on you for that. Thank um, you. I'm just curious. Um, so what are you most excited for to see at the festival? Uh movie-wise, event-wise, uh talent-wise. What are you really looking forward to this year? You know, it, it's funny. In the past, if you had asked me that at any other festival, I could probably, you know, pick out my like two, maybe three top films of, of the entire lineup. This yeah. year we are playing less films. I think we're playing 108 as opposed to, I think last year we played 126. Mm. Um, but to be honest with you, the lineup is so strong. This, year, this is 
in my in my opinion, my honest opinion, this is the strongest lineup that we have ever had since 2017. Um, well, that we've ever had ever since we started. Um, uh, even though 2017 was a good year. Um, mm-hmm. it, you can't go wrong with any of the films we're playing. The, the documentaries, the you know, the, every category: short films, feature films, documentaries, experimental music videos, web series. This is really, as a whole, the the best lineup that we've ever had. And I've right. been telling everybody, you know, I have friends and and friends of friends that that call or people that are texting, oh, uh, emailing, asking, you know, what what do you recommend? What you know, what do you want me to? What should I see? And, and I tell them all the same thing. Look, at the end of the day, it's really, you know, what kind of movie you're into because you can't go wrong. Like our Midnight Madness film, one of our. Uh, one of our screeners, you know, our, our programming team, when we watch all the films, that was their favorite film of the whole of every film that we're playing because right. the Midnight Madness film, which is usually like some kind of cult on the ground, crazy horror film, mm-hmm. it is really, really good this year. I mean, it is amazingly good. Um, our opening night, you know, Paris is in Harlem is a great film, uh, a really good ensemble piece, kind of, kind of like in the style of like a. Uh, Magnolia, P.T. Anderson's Magnolia, mm. or or like Traffic, uh, right. where it's a bunch of stories that all come together. Um, that you know, the opening of the closing night film is really great. Is another film, Civil Silence, mm. uh, and then we have an animated feature film playing on Saturday, Aurora Sunrise. Mm. All these movies, you know, it, it's and and then we have some great documentaries. We have a documentary called uh, Vax, um, I think it's called Vaccine: The Untold Story. I hope that's the right name, uh, the right title. Anyway, it's about you know uh, people who have, who who took the vaccine and ended up being getting worse and hospitalized. Okay. Uh, that that's been getting a lot of buzz. We have another uh, documentary called Gotham: The Fall and Rise of New York, mm. uh, that that explores how New York went from being you know what it was in the seventies and eighties to what it became, basically Disneyland. Uh, in the early 2000s, and now now we're going okay. back to hell to cover that. But anyway, but yeah. So so right. my my point being, I can't I I don't have a particular favorite because they're all so good, and I think it just comes to, down to individual taste because the documentaries, the narratives, the experimentals, the animations, they're all really good. I love it, oh, Jason. Amazing. Uh, the, the dates of the festival. How can people see these great films? What, what's going so, on? So the festival runs from. Friday, August 4th right. through through Saturday, August 12th. We have our award dinner ceremony is Sunday, August 13th. Mm-hmm. That is That marks the end of the festival. It's a big celebration, but there are no movies playing that day. So the last day that we actually play movies, our closing night film is at the Regal UA Midway in Forest Hills mm-hmm. on Saturday, August 12th. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one starts at 8. Opening night is this Friday, August 4th at uh seven o'clock and then daily from august 5th all the way to the 12th we have daily screenings starting at 12 p.m and go on as late i think the last screening daily is 8 30 except for our midnight madness which is on friday the 11th and that is uh that is obviously a midnight uh-huh. um yeah so that is it you can buy tickets you can visit our website www festival of cinema nyc.com and uh, you can find us on instagram facebook twitter twitter x whatever they want to call it now <laughs> yeah, Even right. on youtube uh at fest of cinema nyc so uh yeah and we post daily if you subscribe to our newsletter which you can by visiting our website you will be getting a daily email that comes out every morning uh spotlighting all the films that are coming up and what's you know what's selling out what's a hot ticket and nice. all that good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, and I'll be there for a couple, at least a couple of those days, Jason. I look forward to seeing I hope so. I hope to see you in live in person. Yeah. Uh, in living color, <laughs> flesh and blood. Yeah. I'll be there for sure. Simba, thank you so much for your time tonight. This was great. Uh, a wealth of inf- information. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get some, a really good audience this, this year. I'm very excited. Thank you. We are too. And again, thanks for having me. And again, if I didn't mention the festivals in Forest Hills, Queens, which is 71st Continental Live and you stop on the ERF train. That's it. My name. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it. yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Randy Unger. I, was, <laughs> I almost just called you Unger. Uh, but, no worries, um, no 
Thank but uh, what do you call it? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So Anytime, much. Jason. This, this is going to be a great year. It's just getting better and better. Thank you so much, man. And again, yeah. I hope to see you at the festival and uh, and I hope to see some of your listeners and viewers uh, come out too. Definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. You'll, you'll see. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll all see. Um, all right. Guys, I'm Randy Younger. This has been Under the Radar, bringing movies and people together one frame at a time. We'll see you next time. Take care.